Hey what's up this is Toby and be welcome to another development vlog. So it's been a minute since the last one and while I'm going to tell you what has happened let's take a look at some current gameplay footage of the game. So so yeah I've been working on getting multiplayer to work because initially when I had the idea for this game I wanted to be able to fight against my friends with some nice customizable flying ships and as you can see I kind of got it working. So on uh, the one side there is the one phone and on the other side there's another phone. They're both in my hands and I control them and um, you are able now to be on the same basically uh, live 3D scene and everyone gets a ship, everyone can control their ship and shoot the enemy and as you can see there are still some issues obviously regarding the network connection maybe it was because my second phone has no sim card so it's only working via a hotspot um, so maybe there the connection is not that great but overall it's working and I'm quite happy with it but oh boy the way to get this work was really tedious because I initially thought well I'm just going to basically build a single player experience and then click a button and then um, make it work via multiplayer. So while I was programming and um, doing my stuff in the train and at home, well at some point a good um, co-worker of mine which I asked about this said well it's actually a completely different thing to build a multiplayer experience versus a single player and while I was a bit aware that there are differences and that it's not the same after I was studying a bit more of uh, the documentation well I came to the conclusion that multiplayer is something entirely different than single player and the people who watch who are watching this who are game developers you guys know about this so if you want to design a multiplayer game that's my main takeaway then you should start with that because if we take a look at how this actually works let me show you quickly what I mean so if we want to take a look at how multiplayer works well in a normal scene you just got, for example, your phone, uh, the phone runs all of the game logic and um, you have two ships flying here like this, flying around, flying around and then one ship is gonna, oops, one ship is gonna start shooting at the other ship and um, then there's like a collision happening, pew 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 and uh, for example the AI enemy that is um, in the scene will just lose health, right? So this is how it usually works and everything is nice and tidy in one scene. The AI enemy ha holds the data for itself, the player holds the data for itself and everything is nice and dandy. But if we take a look at how the multiplayer works, and here I got to add that I'm using the Lightship ARDK, so this is not Unity's native or new, newly released dot, uh, not dot .net, uh, netcode, I think netcode is a netcode, I don't know, but they recently released a first stable version for their multiplayer, but this is not the one I'm talking about, I'm talking about the one from the Lightship. Well, we pretty much got two devices that run exactly the same scene, the same code base, and there's kind of a fourth dimension if we're talking about the communication. Um, and they are sending messages in between each other and then basically we can decide whether the host will, uh, will um, do all the movements so let's say the peer will only uh, ask hey can i move forward and then the host will uh, decide whether this is a valid movement or for example the peer can move and a broadcast or update its data to the host and the host will um, broadcast and update its data to the peer and they will both have to kind of readjust the games it's pretty much if you think about it it's pretty much like playing two board games at once and um, you always have to update the position of every kind of figure on the board for both sides. So this is kind of the way that I imagine it and it's completely different than just working from your, from, uh, your single player perspective, right? So um, yeah, that's the experience I made and um, as you could see in the video, I kind of got it working. There is still some issues. 
Um, but I'm moving on. I also tried to get more than two players to work, but there were still more uh, issues and I've also been working with AR meshing as um, you saw in the video when one ship gets destroyed it's just flying through the ground and that's not really what I want that should also cast shadows lay on the ground and stuff like that but currently um, this is also a bit problematic I don't actually know why but um, we'll have to see so this kind of uh, communication layer here is to me a bit like the upside down and stranger things so it's quite hard to to grasp all the time when I need to send a message to what and then you also want to kind of reduce it and also this can only send of course uh, some serialized data so um, maybe I'm just gonna show you this in, um, in the code so uh, let's take a look at this one um, as the only as the only script how we do that close tabs close on tabs okay yeah all right so this is the um, the message manager that i told you so this one is basically responsible for transmitting information between the two devices so for example on my device i'm shooting then the other device needs to know this and also trigger the ship that resembles my ship on the device of the pair that's playing with me to start shooting. I hope that was kind of clear. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is basically how it looks. Um, this is the message manager that will is active on both sides, so both players have this one and um, then one player will trigger one of these methods, for example the broadcast my movement message this one takes a position and a rotation vector and then it will broadcast the data for example um, again then the position the rotation of my ship when i'm moving it and it will uh, serialize this one so this will be converted into an array of bytes and then it will be uh, broadcasted that means every other player if there are three, four, five players, everyone will receive this message except the player who did send it. And then there's another function. So now we're on the other side um, of um, the portal, let's say. So the peer will receive a message which will be a um, position message, a broadcast posi position message. And based on that, it will go into basically what's the, the main script. So this is the logic and uh, creation script. Let's take a look if I can find it somewhere here. Oh man, so many scripts. I'm already beginning to lose the overview. Give me a sec. Okay, so this is the logic creation. And then there is a method that is called uh, receive other movement so then um, if I receive the movement as a peer it basically moves the uh, object the game object of the one of the sender to a certain position so I chose basically the solution where everyone can just move around freely and then send the position to everyone else so this is not uh, the classical way of an online multiplayer let's say where just the host or the server, uh, better, better said, the server um, will decide if a, a movement is valid. And this is because of anti-cheat protection, but I would guess that if it's a game that you play in the same room with your friend then the, and, and also on your phone, then the chances of cheating are quite low. So other changes, obviously the particle systems have improved. I got put some uh, animation in there. So the fan of the ships or the, uh, propeller if you want to call it like that is now moving um, the explosions look a lot nicer there's some um, damage indicator in form of smoke and fire if the ship gets damaged um, there are also these little balloons i don't know if you noticed them but they gonna be some ammo loot uh, boxes 
Loot Balloons, better, yeah, that's better, Loot Balloons, uh, which will be the ones to provide you with ammunition when you, uh, once you run empty. So there's also a limitation on how much ammo you have. So in the later game, you will have just a very limited amount of ammunition in the beginning, and it will be kind of a race towards who gets more ammunition, and then, of course, who's going to um, aim in a better way. So in the future, I also want to incorporate new ships and of course also want to make like a ship configurator where you can customize and individualize your uh, flying ship and uh, change the colors and maybe even get a crew. And I also want to make the playing field more dynamic, so maybe spawn some trees um, and of course improve the destruction animation. But we also got to kind of see um, that we're working with a very limited scope of um, hardware and we cannot do everything because otherwise, well, the device just, the, the loading times take forever and it's just going to start stuttering. All right, but that's it for today's development vlog. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.